good morning students i hope you must have read the chapter yesterday now um today again i'll start with the same chapter the shoemaker of paris but today i will be discussing the question and answers with you now while we are doing the question and answers it will be helpful for you that in case if you've missed the chapter yesterday you can either watch the video or you, by just watching this video again you will have the idea about the story right um, the first thing that I want you to do is to make sure that you make a small notebook like this for your class 8 a notebook like this a small one and write English literature on it on the first page write today's date and of course the name of the chapter the shoemaker of Paris under that you have to write new words and there are words given after the chapter I think so there are five words copy these five words with the meanings right and under that write question and answers and then from there you can copy the questions that are given after the chapter and of course later on the reference to context as well so make sure that you make a proper notebook, cover it, keep it nicely, keep your work neat and clean. So whenever the school will reopen, I would like to check your work, right? So make sure that you do it every day so you, you won't have a burden kind of a thing at the end. So the best thing is take one step at a time. Make sure your notebook is ready. Make sure that you're doing your work every day. Okay, now the shoemaker of Paris, we have already done the story. It's a nice and a beautiful story. It is in fact just an extract of a novel, A Tale of Two Cities. And it is written by Charles Dickens. So let's continue with the question number one. Describe the condition of Saint Antoine in the year 1775. Now, we are, when we are talking about the year 1775, we are talking about the time when they had this French Revolution going on. Now, in, if you see in your book itself, most of the answers are given in a proper manner. You can either copy those answers or you can write it in your own words, right? So remember, uh, when we talk about year 1775, at that time, the place Paris, you know, uh, the capital of France was a great and a rich kind of a city. It was famous and well-known city. However, some parts of that district were very poor. And the poorest was your Saint Antoine. That is one of the most poorest district at that time. And we can see the condition. The people, they were in a miserable condition. They had no food to eat, no nice clothes to wear, and they were starving. They were below the poverty line, they were desperate, they were, uh, you know, ragged, hungry, and they've given one more line here, that misery hung like a black or like a dark cloud over their town. So when we talk about misery, that means the people, they were actually in a miserable condition, right? So when you write this answer, make sure that you get the points from the first para of your chapter on it is on page number five again the first para i if you want i can read it the answer should be in the year 1775 paris the capital of france was a great and rich city but some parts of the city were very poor right so it was a great city but some parts of it were very poor right the poorest district of all was saint anton now the poorest was saint anton right there the people lived in great poverty that was the place that was the district where the people they were living in great poverty they were hungry ragged and desperate misery hung like a black cloud over saint anton so now you'll have to understand that the people they were in a miserable condition right so that is the first answer. Remember or see if you can mark it in your book itself. And if you have understood, then I'll be very happy if you can write it in your own words. Right? Let's move to the second one. 
who was watching the joyous crowd and what was his expression like. Now we all know when this crowd, when these people, they were acting like a mad person, you know, um, they were rushing through the streets of their town, they were drinking wine like dogs, they were on their knees, they were, you know, just uh, collecting it into, into their hands or dipping the rags and drinking the wine. There was one person who was actually watching them. He is none other than the owner of the wine shop, that is Monsieur Defarge. He was standing on the doorway, right? And the barrel was on his way towards the wine shop. He's the owner of the wine shop. So he was standing there and he was watching the joyous crowd. The people, they were acting in a weird manner. They were so happy and excited. They were just running around, drinking wine. They they were in such a miserable condition. And now that when they got wine, that too free of cost, they were not ready to let it go. Right? So they were just trying to drink as much as possible. Now, the second part of the question says, what was his expression like? Now, here Defarge, when he was standing on the doorway, he was looking at the joyous crowd. He could see the people acting in a mad manner, in a weird way. And at the same time, he had, uh, you know, mixed kind of feelings. He was feeling pity and sad. Uh, for the poor. Why? Because of their miserable condition. But at the same time, he was filled with anger. And this anger was for the rich people who actually caused that misery. Right? So Defarge was uh, standing there. He was watching the crowd. And his face had both the expressions at the same time. He was feeling pity for the poor. And he was feeling angry for the rich who caused that misery. Right? If you want, it is in your book, page number six. You can see the second para. Second line, the owner of the wine shop, Monsieur Defarge, was standing in his doorway. He was watching the scene. As he watched, his face showed both pity and anger. There was pity for the misery of the people and there was anger against the rich. Who caused that misery? Clear? So that is the answer that I'm looking for. The first part of the question is easy. Who was watching the joyous crowd? You already know the owner of the wine shop. That is Monsieur Defarge. And apart from that, the second part I've given you here. It is in the book itself, page number six, second panel. Right? Do you want me to write it here or will you remember it? I hope you'll remember it, right? So let's move to the next one. What did he talk to? Okay, I'm sorry. Whom did he talk to? It should be whom, I'm sure. Right. It is who did he talk to? Okay, he. it is who. Who did he talk to at that particular moment or at, at that particular time? What did he talk about? Now, while he was watching the joyous crowd, acting in a weird or mad manner, he was talking or he saw a man, a thin man, what he actually did, he dipped his finger in the red mud. Now this mud was red because of the red wine. So he dipped his finger and then on the wall in the capital letters or bold letters, he wrote blood. Now when he did that, the defarge was also there and he was talking to Gatsby. Now this is the person here. Let's see. It says here, yes, what he says, he says, yes, very soon time will come for blood. So that there will be a time when these people, they'll have to face the imminent blood. So he says here, you know, when he was watching the crowd, he saw a tall thin man named Gatsby to who dipped his finger in the red mud and wrote in large letters blood on the wall. They talked about the time when blood, not wine, will flow on the streets of St. Anton. So there will be a time when there will be blood on the streets of St. Anton rather than wine. So they were talking about the time when soon 
everything will be in a miserable condition again or uh, there will be war. Apart from that, uh, let's move to the next question. Who was Mr. Lorry? Why was he angry with Defarge? Now we all know who was uh, Mr. Lorry. See, Mr. Jarvis Lorry was the guardian of the young lady, Lucy Manning, daughter of Dr. Manning. Mr. Lorry here, okay, he was here with Lucy so that he can make her or, you know, take her or let her meet her father. See, it is given on page number six again. Right? Under the so, picture that you have, under the picture you can see, one was a, now, Mr. Laurie was an elderly gentleman. He was clearly an Englishman. Right? So, he, the way he was dressed, it was clear that he was an Englishman. So, you can write about that. Why was he angry with Defarge? On seeing that Defarge has kept Dr. Manet in a room, which was locked. And not only that, there were three men standing by the door, looking through the crack. He got angry and asked Defarge if he was trying to make a public show of the doctor. It is given on page number seven. Just below the picture, the image, you can see three men were standing by a door. These are the lines that you can write if you want. So that is the answer that I am looking for. Right? Make sure that you do understand the questions and answers and write the proper answers. So do you want me to repeat? If you want, I can repeat it. In the question number one, you'll talk about the condition of the town. It is given on page number five, the first para. Second, who was watching the joyous crowd. It is on page number six, again, second para. You can mark it. Right, Monsieur Defarge was standing in the doorway, that part. And what was his expression like? So you can write till the, who caused that misery part. Who did he talk to? It is given there again. He talked to the thin tall man named Gasper. Right, and what did they talk about? The blood. You know, it says here, soon the time will come for blood. Soon, very soon. So they were talking about the time when there will be blood on the streets rather than wine. Who was Mr. Laurie? I've already given you. He's, he was the guardian of Lucy Manet, uh, the daughter of Dr. Manet, and he was an elderly gentleman, clearly an Englishman. Why was he angry with Defarge? He was really angry on seeing that Defarge has kept Dr. Manet in a log room. And not only that, but there were three men standing by, a, by his door and they were looking through the cracks in it. So he thought, if he even thought that Defarge is making a public show of the doctor. Right? Now these are the questions that you need to do in your notebook. Apart from that, we have some reference to context as well on page number 9. See the reference to context number 1. However, one dull November day, there was laughter in St. Anton. Now, we're talking about the day when this barrel fell and the people, they were going crazy, trying to drink whatever they could. See the question number one. Why was there laughter in St. Anton on one dull November day? Why there was laughter? Now, you can always write the answer. You, I'm sure you know. One dull November day, there was laughter because a barrel of wine had fallen from a passing car. It, as it, you know, and apart from that, it is given on page 5 again. It had broken as it fell. The wine had run out over the road. The holes in the road had become the pools of red wine. The miserable people rushed out to drink what they could and laughter. They laughed and laughed. Laughter was a strange sound in St. Anton. Right? Why did the author start the sentence with however? Now there is a reason why he started the sentence with however. Because they were already in a miserable condition. 
they were not in a happy condition they were not laughing and dancing and enjoying the thing they were in a miserable condition however there came a day when they actually laughed they enjoyed that day so that is why he has used the word however so the author starts the sentence with however because on one dull november day there was laughter in the streets of saint anton right and laughter was strange for them because they were laughing after a very long time see the next question how did the people behave in the laughter all oh, the people they were really they were acting like mad they were acting as if they had never seen wine and they were just getting crazy on seeing the wine on the street they acted like dogs they bent down on the knees they drank like dogs you know some people even uh, they actually dipped their rags into the wine and they drank it so people they were behaving like crazy when me next see the second reference to context when madam defarge saw her husband she gave a little cough why did madam defarge give a little cough now she gave a little cough you know <clears throat> kind of a thing so that she can attract her husband's attention why towards these strangers who were sitting there in the wine shop she wanted to attract her husband's attention and she wanted him to know that there there are some strangers sitting in the wine shop right see the next question what was its effect on her husband it is again given on page number 6 right defarge followed her look and he saw that two strangers were sitting at a table so defarge was a nice person it took him a second to understand that his wife wants him to follow her, her looks and see towards the strangers who else were present on the scene how did they react so apart from uh, defarge and his wife two strangers were present there one was jarvis lorry and the other one was young lady lucy manet the moment uh, they saw defarge coming towards them they got up and they introduced themselves so this is how they reacted they reacted in a nice manner right after this we have c and d we have two more references you can always go through them c is again question number 1 who was the young lady we all know the young lady was lucy manet she was the daughter of dr manet what connection did he have with her defarge was uh, lucy's or dr manet's servant 18 years ago so this connection was pretty strange he was there serving that to 18 years ago why had the young lady come to defarge she had come here so that she can take her father home she was here for her father was her visit very successful oh yes of course her visit was successful why because when she came here she got to meet her father right and she was planning to take him home Now I want you to move to the D part. Why did Mr. Lorry take her arm and led her inside? Now Lucy Manet was visiting or meeting her father after eighteen years, and she was scared and she was trembling like a leaf. So that so that is why Mr. Lorry he came and he held her arm and led her inside the room. she was hesitating and she was little frightened to enter into the room why because she was meeting her father after 18 years who was the man why was he here now the man who was there in a long room was dr manet he was here after he got released from the imprisonment after 18 years so he was here at defarge um, at his house Defarges, and he was again in a miserable condition. He was here. I'm sure Defarge must have brought him here. 
Describe his appearance. It is given on page number eight, top lines. There was a man, you know, he was bending over a shoemaker's bench. His back was towards the door. His face was turned towards the light coming from a tiny window. His long hair was snow white. His clothes hung like rugs from his thin shoulders. So that is the last answer of your reference to context. Make sure that you make a proper notebook and you complete your notes. Complete these question and answers. Once they are done, once they are, you finish them, then you can continue with the reference to context answers. Now understand the answers for the reference to context are not very long. They are just one or two line answers. So please do not worry and do not leave your work incomplete. Make sure that you complete it as we are reading the chapters and completing it. So please do not keep anything for the later on. All right, complete your work as soon as possible. So that is it for today. I hope uh, you've understood the question and answers, and I hope you have understood the chapter as well. If you have any doubts, please do let me know. Right? That is it for today. Thank you.